So hello everyone, welcome back in my YouTube channel. I'm Shelly Sharma, pursing MBBS. So today I'm here to discuss an important topic of anatomy, abdomen, rectus sheath. So let's start. Uh, so before starting of rectus sheath, uh, let us take a quick revision of anterior abdominal wall. Uh, as we know that there are three muscles in abdomen, external oblique muscles, internal oblique muscles, transverse abdominis muscle. So these are the three muscles of abdomen. Uh, and we know, uh, so let's see the rectus sheath. If we see the definition of the rectus sheath, it is open erratic sheath which covers rectus abdominis and it has two parts, anterior and posterior. If we see the features, anterior wall and posterior wall. Anterior wall, it is complete covering of muscles from end to end. So I made this model for you. This will help you to understand this topic simply. As you can see, this is the rectus abdominis muscle. The anterior wall, which is completely covering the muscle from end to end. Okay. And it is incomplete and being deficient above costal margin and below arcuate line. In the anterior wall, it is firmly adherent to tenderness intersection of rectus muscle. Now let us see the formation. As we have this rectus abdominis muscle, you can see here, you can see here is three parts. Part A, part B and part C. Part A, it is above the costal margin and part B between the costal margin and arcuate line and part C this is below the arcuate line. Let us see each part of rectus abdominis muscle above the costal part A above the costal margin you can see anterior wall is external oblique muscle and posterior wall is deficient and the rectus muscle rests directly on 5th, 6th and 7th costal margin. Okay now you can see the part B between the costal margin and arcuate line. So the anterior wall is external oblique muscle and then anterior oponeurosis of internal oblique and the posterior wall of B part of rectus abdominis muscle. You can see posterior lamella of anterior oblique muscle. Okay. So if we see this is the anterior oblique muscle which make anterior wall and posterior wall of and making anterior lamella and posterior lamella. So the B part of rectus abdominis, anterior lamella and posterior lamella, anterior internal oblique muscle and posterior internal oblique muscle. So now let's see the third part below the arcuate line. You can see the anterior wall, the anterior wall, external oblique muscle, then internal oblique muscle and transverse abdominis muscle in the posterior wall. It is deficient. Okay. So, okay. Let us try to understand it with the help of diagram also. You are seeing this is the part A up present above the costal margin and anterior wall external oblique oponeurosis and the posterior wall deficient. You are seeing 5th, 6th, 7th costal margin. Let's see the second part present between the costal margin and arcuate line. The anterior wall of rectus abdominis muscle you can see it is external oblique oponeurosis and it is anterior oponeurosis of internal oblique and it is posterior lamella of oponeurosis. The posterior lamella of oponeurosis of transverse muscle then transverse abdominis, fascia transverse alis. So anterior wall is external oblique oponeurosis and anterior oponeurosis of internal oblique, posterior lamella of oponeurosis of transverse muscle and transverse abdominis. and transverse abdominis then fascia transversalis okay so it is very simple you can understand it easily now you can see the third part below the arcuate line anterior wall external oblique oponeurosis then internal oblique and transverse abdominis which make anterior wall and transverse abdominis which make anterior wall and fascia transversalis make posterior wall let us see its content. So in the content you can see muscles. So in the muscles you can see muscles uh, as you can see rectus abdominis, rectus abdominis and, pyram and pyramidalis lies front of lies front of lower part of rectus abdominis. Now arteries, superior epigastric artery, inferior epigastric artery. Superior epigastric artery enter the sheath by passing between costal and xiphoid. Inferior epigastric artery enter the enter sheath by in front of arcuate line. Now vein, as you learn superior epigastric artery, 
inferior epigastric artery same as you can learn it easily superior epigastric vein inferior epigastric vein now terminal parts of lower six thoracic nerves now let us see function what are the functions taking bowing of rectus muscle during contraction maintain the strength of anterior abdominal wall i hope this video will help you if you have any doubt related to this video so that you can comment it in comment section thank you so much